Hi everyone! So today we're going to be doing a donut painting tutorial. I've already gone ahead and sketched out a few donut shapes. This is a Strathmore mixed media sketchbook and it has 90 pound cotton paper. And I do recommend for this tutorial that you use cotton paper. But if you do decide to use a cellulose based paper, just be a little more cautious with the amount of water that you're loading into the paper. I also have some paper towels and I have acrylic gouache. This is Acrylla by Holbein. And the colors I am using are primary magenta, primary yellow, primary cyan, burnt sienna, burnt umber, black, and white. For brushes, I'm just going to stick to a couple of brushes that I feel comfortable with. And I have a little number two script liner. And then I have this little filbert, which unfortunately I'm not sure what size it is, but any small brush that you feel comfortable with. These are both synthetic sables, so fairly soft brushes. I've also got some water for washing my brush and a little spray bottle and I've got my paints close by in case I need to add a little bit more. So we'll see how that goes. My first step, I'm going to get my brush wet and I'm going to start with the base donut color. And um want a, a warm sort of color. So I'm going to go into Burnt Sienna. And I'm getting it fairly diluted. We'll just start on this one here. And I'm going around the bottom edge. Washing my brush out again. And then I'm going to take my paper towel and just blot up some of the color. So I've got a nice stain going on on the paper there. Uh, next I want to pick up some yellow. Not, not the blue, the cyan, I accidentally did. And I'm looking for a color that is kind of an earthy yellow, sort of like yellow ochre, something like that. And I'm going to pick up some white too. And I didn't add much water here. So I'm going to go into a darker color. I did, I'm using the same dirty brush, I didn't wash it out. And I'm in the burnt umber and the burnt sienna, and I still have white on the brush, so it made kind of a tan, I guess, kind of a warm tan.
Now how far you take the paint up on the donut depends on whether or not you want to put icing on it or if you want to leave your donut plain. I'm going to put icing on this donut, so I'm just going to not really worry about this part. And I'm going to put a little bit of this down here in the middle of the donut hole. And maybe a little sienna right here. And I'm going to take a little more of that sienna and put it up here. So for this painting, I'm imagining that the light source is coming from the right hand side. So as I paint, I'm going to keep that in mind and I'm going to be putting more shadows over here and more light over here. Okay, so I'm going to take a little more sienna and burnt umber. I washed out my brush so there's nothing in it, and this is pretty thick paint, no water. And I'm just going to add a little more shadow over here, carefully. And then I'm going to wash out my brush so it's damp, and I'm just blending that in. And the same color over here that we used before, this, this light yellow ochre color, or warm yellow, it's not exactly yellow ochre, but it's a warm yellow color. I'm gonna pick up more white and add to that. It's, it's got a little bit of water in it, I believe. And I'm just gonna add in a little more highlight. And I like how that looks, so I'm going to leave that alone. One of the hardest things about painting is, is knowing when to stop. And you start doing something and it feels feels really good and you want to keep going with it and then what can happen is that you take it too far. So I'm in the black now. I didn't add water to this. And I'm going to start laying in the chocolate. So for the chocolate you want this paint to be pretty thick and you don't want to add so much water. And then I'm going to pick up the burnt umber and start bringing more in, more of the burnt umber in. And then more. And you can pretty much hold the brush however feels most comfortable to you. I'm holding it kind of on its side so that I'm getting sort of a bead of paint. 
so that I get a nice smooth edge. I'm going to bring in more that burnt umber over here and maybe even a little bit of this burnt sienna. And since this burnt sienna is a lighter color, it's going to brighten it up even more. Okay, I'm going to go back to the black because I'm going to be putting some of the icing that's down, started to dribble down into the donut hole. Okay, now I'm just going to reshape some burnt umber and burnt sienna. I'm going to reshape up here because that looks a little weird to me. And back to the black. I might just make this icing come down a little more. I don't want to take it too far. And right down here, I think I'm going to add a little more burnt sienna because it looks like it needs a little more there, but you don't have to. Since it is, uh, you know, a donut and it's food, they don't always come out perfectly shaped. And while I'm waiting for the icing to dry up a little more, because I'm going to add more layers on top of that, just for highlights and contrast, I think I'm going to do a little bit of a, of a watery, kind of watercolor shadow underneath the donut. You don't have to if you don't want to. Since I'm imagining that my light is coming from this way, the shadow is going to be over here. So I'm um, just making a dark color. You can really do whatever whatever color shadow you want. Now this looks really dark. It's very watery though. And then very quickly, I like to pick up a lot of that pigment. just by blotting it. And then I got a much softer shadow. And then I can take a wet brush add more if I want and blot it again. And if you like you can do different colors. So it might be fun to pick up more warm colors for the shadow area. When you're blotting, just be sure that you're not picking up any um, paint accidentally on your rag and adding it there. And I'm going to get some water and try to lift some of that. 
So I went a little over the edge. And again, this is why it's nice to have cotton paper because it's a little easier to lift color. So if you're using a cellulose based paper, I'd be more careful about how much water I'm adding and scrubbing on the paper too hard. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to the chocolate and start bringing up these highlights. So when you're thinking about the chocolate, the highest places are the places that are going to catch the most light. So that's going to be on the very top. And I'm going to pick up some white. So I'm going to pick up more white. And I'm just gradually bringing up the value. So these are each layer is consecutively, it's a really subtle value shift. So sometimes it's hard to see it at first, but as you go through more layers, eventually when you get to the end product, you can see how the layering process has really overall made it more dimensional looking. So more white. And then as I'm adding even more white, I'm getting a bit tighter in the area that I'm applying it. And you can vary the color. You can pick up more burnt sienna than burnt umber, for example. So I've cleaned my brush off and I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and I'm not really adding a whole lot of the brown and I'm going to put a little bit of highlight here and then um, a little bit of highlight here. Even though the inside of the donut is mostly in shadow, it's still going to catch some highlight. And I'm just blurring it out, my finger. And I'm going to get a little more white, just a touch. And then hi highlight is another one of those things where it's easy to go too far. So I'm going to take some of this light brown that I have down here. It's kind of it's kind of a middle between this and this. And I'm going to add some highlights, reflected light, actually, down here. Because even though this part is in shadow, you can imagine that part of the surroundings are going to reflect, be reflecting some amount of light. 
So it's not going to be as strong as the reflection that you're getting on the main side, but there will still be some reflected light. Okay, I'm going to take my script liner and I just want to add a little bit of a darker dough color underneath the icing. So this is just so some of this um, just some of this leftover color here. And not much of this because I don't want to take away too much of what I put down because then I would have to redo it. And it's fine if you do accidentally take something away that you didn't mean to. This is going to take a little bit more time to go back to where you were. Okay, so at this point I think we've got a reasonably good representation of a, of a chocolate donut. I'm just cleaning up a few edges. And you'll notice that there's some colors here that I haven't touched yet. And that is because I'm going to be doing some more donuts in different colors. So these will be for frosting and sprinkles, this magenta and this cyan. So if you are interested in seeing that, then we're going to go ahead and do a part two. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!